turn that off, but I'm going to make that edge flange flush. And then I'm going to go edit flange profile. And then we're going to be really careful here not to press escape. Last time we did this run, we pressed escape. We kicked ourselves out of the command, and it ended up costing us a few valuable seconds on the speed run. So instead of... Hey, what's up everybody, t -Tall Toby here, and today I'm gonna try once again to qualify for the upcoming 2026 Winter Open Tournament over at TwoTallToby.com. If you wanna get some more information about this tournament, you can go to TwoTallToby.com slash tournaments. You can enter this tournament for free using any 3D CAD system. And in order to qualify, you need to register qualify here on this page. And what you're gonna do to qualify is you're gonna try to model this part, this part and this part all in a row these one two three parts all in a row you're going to record yourself doing that and then you're going to upload the video now last time i did this i did it in 10 minutes and six seconds using solidworks today i'm going to try to get a faster time so if that all sounds good to you be sure to hit the like button on this video and let's get into it here we've got the timer up on screen so everybody can see the timer we've got our cad system here we're going to model each of these parts this first part we're going to try to model it and come up with a mass of 400 grams the second part 359.3 and this third part here 3.45 pounds of course not only does the mass need to be correct but the geometry needs to be correct as well during this qualifying run so here we go let's begin in three two one go all right let's get to 400 grams on this first part this is in abs and mmgs so we're going to start out here on the top plane begin a sketch s key begin a rectangle single click move our mouse let go of our mouse 80 enter 183 enter now i know we could save time if we added fillets here in this sketch but the reality is that in my workflow i would add these fillets as a separate feature okay i think it's better practice it's better to work with it this way and uh, i'm not trying to take shortcuts just to be faster for the qualifier you know i really want to practice some best practices here now that's just my style if you want to practice uh you know more shortcuts and uh, just to qualify with a faster time it's all good we're all trying to to get to that first place spot here for this qualifier but for me what i'm going to do is i'm going to make really all three of these features as three separate features where maybe when you do it you'll just do it all in one single sketch and that's totally cool if that's how you do it but this is how i would do it in the real world this is what i would consider kind of a best practice do it as three separate features so we're going to rip that slot through all and now we're ready to get into kind of the the middle section of this part the middle section of this part is in my opinion is like a rectangle with a half circle on it and then a um uh uh, an, an additional extrusion as well. So I'm gonna take this rectangle and make it midpoint here. I'm gonna drop in a circle here like so. I'm gonna give that circle a radius of 24. So this is diameter here, so I'll do 24 times two for the diameter. If I really wanted it to be a radius, I could maybe do something like this, and I could say that this point here is vertical to the origin. I could say that this is horizontal here. Uh, this might be a little bit of overkill here for speed modeling, because I'm fine on the fly converting radii to diameter, but look, Again, if we're, if we're sticking with official best practices, this might be what I would do. Okay, I'll double click this face here so it goes up to surface, and then for direction two, I'll go up to surface as well. So we'll go up to both of those surfaces. Now we're gonna go back to that front plane and begin another sketch here. And for this sketch, maybe what we could do is uh, show this earlier sketch and just convert some of this geometry. Really, I could have just converted it off of those edges as well, but I would probably opt to convert it from the underlying sketch. And then I would create a circle here like so, and then trim that circle and the reason i'm doing that is because again then i can get a radius you know if the customer gave me these dimensions in radii and i'm ever going to get into a design review meeting with them it's going to be nice that the dimensions are in the same exact values so that's going to go to a depth of 106 right mouse button mid plane right mouse button and there we go now the only thing that's really left to do is just add that little pocket area in this uh, top plane these these rectangles to use as a pocket area i'm going to do this as a center point rectangle here like so because then i can take this point and make it horizontal to the origin then I'm going to add a construction line here on the origin and then I'm going to right click here on this rectangle and say select chain hold control pick that construction line let go of control mirror and then I can go in and I can add in this 50 dimension for that um, uh, height of the rectangle and then this dimension here 76 for the distance between those rectangles s key extrude cut right mouse button reverse direction right mouse button through all right mouse button to finish I think that's it for that part let's look at the mass here control Q 
and 399.95 or 400 grams. Click here when finished with Model 1 and we move on to Model 2. Now this is a sheet metal model here and this one is in plain carbon steel and millimeters. So new plain carbon steel millimeters template. And a lot of times when I start out with a shape like this, it's kind of like an L shape. What I'll do is I'll actually create a rectangle first and I'll make that rectangle 38 by 70. And then I'll hit escape and just window these lines here. And in my case, I'll press Q. But what I'm doing there is I'm turning those lines into four construction. Now I can choose to extrude this as sheet metal, so base flange tab, bring that out to 80, and then I'm going to go down here, 5, tab tab, 7, enter, and then the direction of the material looks correct, so I'll just press enter again. Now I'm going to get rid of this front corner area, and I know we could do that with a chamfer, but if it's not a 45 degree chamfer, a lot of times I'll just make it as a cut extrude, especially if it's just one chamfer. Um, certainly if it's multiple, then I would probably consider doing it as a chamfer feature, but if it's just one here, like this example, I would probably I just sketch up that triangle and then cut extrude it and this is going to be linked to thickness for the depth of that cut extrude and then I would go in and I would create this sketch here for the uh, bend relief again in in uh you know in some scenarios you might say why not just combine those two sketches together and certainly you can do that but for me a lot of times I have my my features separate it makes it a little easier to edit and troubleshoot those features when they are separate so I would make these as two separate sketches and then for this one here you can hold shift and then you can pick on the, the tip of this arc here and you can make that go out to 16. I'm not saying you have to follow these best practices when you're doing your speed run for qualifying. I'm just trying to show you that you can still be fast even if you do follow best practices. You don't have to give up you know, best practices and quality just to be fast. Here for some reason SolidWorks always wants to offset this edge flange. I don't know why it keeps insisting on that but I'm just going to turn that off and I'm going to make that edge flange flush and then I'm going to go edit flange profile and then we're going to be really careful here not to press escape. Last time we did this run we pressed escape. We kicked ourselves out of the command and it ended up costing us a few valuable seconds on the speed run. So instead of pressing escape when I'm in here editing the edge flange, I'm going to remember to right mouse button and choose select instead of choosing escape to kind of get out to uh, to neutral, right mouse button select. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, again, it's something that even though it is a little bit annoying, it is kind of cool that we can learn that lesson through repetition. And that's the whole point of practice models. And that's the whole point of, uh, in this case, practicing and grinding these tournament runs. You get to learn some of these kind of more nuanced workflows to maybe look out for to save you time in the real world. And then for this final fillet down here, I'm going to do this using the sheet metal break corners command. The nice thing about the break corners command here is that you can window the geometry and kind of get what you want. So that's going to be 15 and it's going to be a fillet. And then I can hit the green check mark and there we go. That part's looking pretty good. Let's see what the mass looks like. Control Q, whoops, Control Q and 359.3. .3, and that's exactly what we were hoping for. Click here to finish that model and now we've got one more model that we're going to try to create here. This one is probably the easiest of the three. Um, we can probably do this with a real quick revolve shape. So I'm going to go here to front uh, to a new part. This is going to be in plain carbon steel but inches. It's an inches part. I like that. And then front plane begin a sketch and I'm going to create a line here that comes over about two inches say about two inches here, comes up about three quarters, uh, three eighths of an inch, gonna come over here, come up, come over, and then I'm just gonna kinda come in a little bit for that chamfer and then close that thing off. And then I'm gonna take this uh, line here and make it for construction, and I'm gonna add another construction line here that goes straight up from the origin. And that should set me up nicely to create all the geometry I need for this shape. This one here, this di inside diameter, 1.25. This diameter here to this point, 1.625. This diameter here to this line, two inches even. This diameter out here to this outer line, four inches even. And then the distance from this horizontal line to our construction line, 0 0.750. The distance from this point here to our construction line, three inches even. And then this guy here, we'll just bring this down and then add in a dimension here at 45 degrees. So 45. And then we can take all this geometry here, hold control, pick this construction line mirror, and then S key uh, exit sketch, and then S key revolve. So here in our solid features, revolve. And what are we going to revolve about? About this center line right here. S key fill it, pick on this edge right here. That's going to be 0 0.125. And then finally pick this face here, begin a sketch, get normal to S key circle. We're going to create a circle here at three inches, create another circle here at 0 0.375. We can hit escape, take this circle, press Q for construction, S key extrude cut, right mouse button, through wall, right mouse button. And then we'll finish off here by doing our circular pattern. So we go here, circular pattern, pick this feature, 
pick this face, total number of instances, four, enter, enter, control Q. Let's look at the sensor here. 3.45 pounds, that's what we're hoping for. Click here when finished. Let's go, eight minutes and 18 seconds. So we got that time down from 10 minutes and six seconds to eight minutes and 18 seconds. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I like to see. So I'm pretty happy with that run. I think I'm gonna submit that run. I'm gonna say I have read and understand and agree to the tournament rules, and I'm gonna choose submit here. And so now the next step is gonna be for me to post this video on YouTube, and then I can copy that link right into my user profile so everybody can see a video of my run. So guys, if you liked that video run, let me know down below in the comments. If you have any questions about any of the shortcuts or the workflows that I use there, let me know that as well. And if you or anyone you know using any 3D CAD system is interested in entering our upcoming 2026 Winter Open Tournament, you can enter using any 3D CAD system for free. Registration is going to be open for the rest of the month, so get those qualifying runs in there. And good luck to everyone, and I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next Two Tall Toby Tournament Qualifying Speedrun.